It's time for member statements. I recognize the member for Toronto St. Paul's. Thank you, Speaker. I'm rising on behalf of my community members in Toronto St. Paul's who work as acupuncturists and traditional Chinese medicine practitioners. There are significant portions of the government's Bill 88 Working for Workers Act that is not working for workers, namely Schedule 5. According to my constituents, this jeopardizes not only the careers of acupuncturists in Ontario, but also endangers the general public's health and safety. Section 2 essentially deregulates the profession and takes it backwards by decades. Nearly 40,000 folks, Speaker, have signed a Change.org petition in the last seven days and are against this government's plan to deregulate traditional Chinese medicine. If that isn't a dissenting voice, I don't know what is. My community wants to remind this government that dismantling their regulatory college paves the way for just about anyone to take up the, the profession, regardless of their training. Schedule 5 will remove the safeguards, standards of practice, and professional competencies required by the College of Traditional Chinese Medicine Practitioners and Acupuncturists of Ontario. Members have also flagged what they have reported as the distinctively discriminatory nature of Schedule 5, as it singles out traditional Chinese medicine, of which many practitioners are racialized. They've also flagged potential conflicts of interest between this government and its pseudo-consultation process around Schedule 5. Section 7 allows for the termination of all unresolved investigations, inquiries and proceedings related to fitness to practice or discipline that were being conducted by the college. How does this protect someone who may have a current investigation related to sexual harassment, clean needle techniques and so forth? How does Section 7 promote accountability and protections for, pro for both practitioners and clients? It simply doesn't. As one of our clinic owners in St. Paul's told me in an email, regulatory colleges are created to protect the public, not to create barriers for people who want to practice the medicine. Thank you, Speaker. Member statements. The member for Haldeman Norfolk. Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, I'd like to inform this House of uh, <clears throat> what's in uh, my estimate one of Canada's best foreign aid programs. It's a program that involves people who want to work, who temporarily come to Canada, work at remuneration that, given exchange rates, is quite lucrative, bankrolling them to return home each year with significant savings. Speaker, I'm referring to the uh, Temporary Foreign Worker Program, the Seasonal Agricultural Worker Program that contributes so much to Ontario's and Canada's agribusiness prosperity. Uh, this year, something like up to 6,000 offshore workers will be arriving in uh, Haldeman, Norfolk, uh, primarily Norfolk County, initially uh, early in the year for orchard pruning, uh, then harvesting asparagus, and then on to uh, planting and nurturing and ultimately harvesting and uh, packing a plethora of fruit and vegetable crops, ginseng, tobacco, and greenhouse products. Quite simply, in, in my view, offshore labor has been a welcome addition to our area's labor-intensive agriculture, and it's a, it's a great long-standing program, and we cannot farm without it. All of Ontario's farm workers are vital part of Ontario's uh, food supply chain system. We've got a good system going here, and we have to do everything we can to uh, maintain this program in a, in a safe and secure way. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member for Waterloo. Thank you very much. Later today, my colleague from Brampton Centre and I will reintroduce the Till Death Do Us Part legislation. I first became involved with reunification of couples in long-term care back in December 2017, when I learned that Don and Patricia Dayton were forced to live apart against their will after 64 years of marriage. He made a promise to her that he would never leave her alone. But so few options existed, they were never able to live together on the same care campus. It was never a priority. His lovely wife passed away. Ontario failed them. Jim McLeod and his wife, married 60 years, had been separated for four and a half years. He travelled here to listen to the debate in 2019, and he wasn't impressed that that bill sat in committee for three years before prorogation. He delivered petitions for almost three years. He's not going to give up, and neither are we. I've raised this issue with successive health ministers, including Eric Hoskins, Helen, Helena Jazik, and the outgoing Minister of Health, as well as the Minister of Long-Term Care. Five long years have passed. 
The pandemic revealed how broken the caring of seniors has become under successive governments. Dignity and integrity are at the heart of reuniting seniors in the last years of their marriage or partnership. One could also argue compassion and humanity. One bureaucrat at the former Waterloo Lynn said, it's not just their policy. There are our other priorities. If we can agree that separating couples in their last years is wrong, let's change that. Let's make it a priority. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Oakville. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, today, I'm honoured to rise in the Legislature to bring attention to International Women's Day. Tomorrow, on March 8th, we recognize International Women's Day. This day is significant because we reflect on the incredible achievements of women. There are incredible organizations in Oakville that are empowering women in business, education, politics, and every part of our society. The Zonta Club of Oakville was founded in 1973 and since its creation has been empowering women by providing resources, advocating for change, hosting fundraisers, and establishing education projects. They are supporting women in my community and breaking barriers. Additionally, Zonta Oakville is celebrating International Women's Day with a beautiful archway in downtown Oakville. I encourage everybody in Oakville to go and visit and take a picture underneath to celebrate. I would also like to bring attention to the Women of Halton Action Movement that is promoting women's advancement by developing and supporting social, political, cultural, economic strategies to achieve gender equality municipally, regionally, nationally, and internationally. I'll be proudly joining their International Women's Day party that is raising funds for Savas Halton and the Canadian Women for Women in Afghanistan Halton. International Women's Day also reminds us that we need to continue to work towards creating a society that is free of discrimination, stereotypes, and harassment with equal opportunity. Being a father of four daughters and a, wife, a husband to my loving wife, Nadia, women's issues matter greatly to me. Thank you, Speaker. Very nice. Member Statements. York Southwest. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. On Wednesday, February 23rd, we marked a historic day in Ontario as the Ontario NDP officially introduced the Our London Family Act in the legislature, created in close collaboration with the National Council of Canadian Muslims. This new legislation will fight back against Islamophobia, hate, and white supremacist groups. On June 6, 2021, three generations of the Afsa family were killed in an Islamophobic attack in London, Ontario. In September of 2020, Mohammed Aslam had his life taken while volunteering his time at the IMO Mosque in Toronto. No one should be fearful of working our streets, attending their places of worship, and simply being a part of our society based on their religion, their clothes, or the color of their skin. Our London Family Act takes a bold and concrete action to tackle Islamophobia and hate in Ontario. This is not a partisan issue, it is a moral one. Last week, the government, with no community consultation, took an unprecedented action by moving the bill to committee before second reading debate. Words are not enough, Mr. Speaker. I urge the government to act in good faith and ensure that our Land and Family Act passes into law before uh, the coming election. And I ask the government directly to provide assurances, a timeline, and a plan to make sure this legislation becomes a reality. Our communities deserve no less than that, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Speaker. Last week, in the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Ukrainian Orthodox Cathedral in Ottawa, held a donation drive for the people of Ukraine. Volunteers prepared boxes of donated priority medical and shelter related items food, diapers, clothes, and other desperately needed items. There was an outpouring of support to send much needed humanitarian aid to the Ukraine, so much so that the donations had to be stacked outside the church. Ottawa came together united to support the people of Ukraine. On Sunday, on Sunday I, I attended uh, the rally at Parliament Hill that was organized by the Ukrainian Canadian Congress. People from across Ottawa came to protest the war, call for peace, and call for more action by their governments. What is happening in the Ukraine is a horror. And in the face of this grievous suffering, we are all compelled to act, to help in any way we can to reduce that suffering. And it's important that governments take a leadership role in these efforts. And while the province's contribution of $300,000 was a welcome start, 
Ontario needs to do more. We need to do more to support communities who want to host refugees. We need to do more to match Ontario's, in, Ontarians' contributions to the humanitarian effort, and we need to do that quickly, Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, tomorrow is International Women's Day. It's a day to celebrate the achievements of women everywhere, to raise awareness and to support equality. I'm always inspired and supported every day by the wonderful women in my life, including my amazing mom, my sister, and my grandmother, who are constant reminders that women can do anything. Women's Day is an opportunity to tell your family and friends how important they are. I want to wish all of the amazing women and girls here in the legislature, in my riding of Carleton, the ladies on my staff, and all of the women across the province a happy International Women's Day. I especially want to highlight that even though our politics might be different and we might not see eye to eye when it comes to policy, it's always a pleasure to see former Premier Kathleen Wynne, who was Ontario's first women premier here in the legislature. I also want to take a moment to recognize Jackie Gordon. Jackie Gordon is the first woman in Ontario to become Sergeant at Arms here in the Legislature. <laughs> so once again, Mr. Once again, Mr. Speaker, thank you to all the amazing women and young girls and girls everywhere in my riding of Carleton and across the province. And I want to thank everyone for being such a great inspiration. Happy International Women's Day to everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Sudbury. Thank you very much, Speaker. On February 24th, Russia launched a wide-ranging attack on Ukraine. And in Sudbury, just like every member of this House, we stand with Ukraine, Speaker. I've often said that Sudbury is a community that cares, and I want to give you a few examples. Last week, the Ukrainian Senior Centre began sewing Ukrainian flags as a fundraiser for those impacted by the war. Demand for the flags grew so quickly that they ran out of material. The seniors were also fundraising by selling their handmade pierogies and their cabbage rolls, and within two days, they were completely sold out. Similarly, places like the Beef and Bird and the Crusoe Club have also started fundraising to stand with Ukraine. Speaker, Sudbury is a community that cares. Yesterday, on Sunday, I joined hundreds of Sudburyans outside of St. Mary's Ukrainian Catholic Church. And we had bad weather yesterday. Freezing rain filled our streets and our sidewalks with slush. It was a day where you could make an excuse about why you couldn't make it. But Sudbury doesn't make excuses. We are a community that cares. The sidewalk along Notre Dame from Lloyd Street to Louis Street was filled with Sudburyans of all ages holding banners and waving blue and yellow Ukrainian flags. And before we left, we stood outside of St. Mary's. We surrounded a giant blue and yellow Ukrainian flag as Helia Bubi, Buba excuse me, led us in chants of Stand with Ukraine and Slava Ukraine. In Sudbury, we are a community that cares. We are a city that stands with Ukraine. Slava Ukraine. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Aurora, Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, Speaker, and good morning to all my colleagues here in the Legislature. Speaker, uh, on Saturday, I joined my colleagues from all levels of government, federal, municipal, and of course myself and my colleague from uh, the other ridings representing here the Ontario Legislature at the monthly meeting organized by two absolute champions in our area, Mr. Speaker, Pamela and Harry Harak of the Caribbean North Charities Foundation, Mr. Speaker. Now, every month, Speaker, Pamela and Harry uh, organize our monthly meetings, Mr. Speaker, to be able to bring our community together to celebrate um, the, uh, the history and arts and cultures of the various backgrounds that we have representing and making our community of Aurora, Ridges, Richmond Hill so rich and unique, Mr. Speaker. On Saturday, it was an opportunity for us to celebrate and learn more about Nowruz, which, as you know, in a couple of weeks, it will be the beginning of Nowruz, which is Persian New Year. Uh, in the past, Mr. Speaker, Pamela and Harry have brought all of us together every month to celebrate the Lunar New Year, Black History Month, and many, many, many other celebrations. Mr. Speaker, 
Pamela and Harry Harak are absolute giants in, in our community, Mr. Speaker. The Caribbean North Foundation's work is not only to, is not only incredibly important in our area, Mr. Speaker, but the, the Pamela and Harry go above and beyond Ontario and Canada. Their charity supports many initiatives in Guyana, and uh, Mr. Speaker, I cannot thank them enough. These two tireless volunteers always go above and beyond to bring us together. Thank you very much. You make our community much better. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Brampton North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's estimated that up to a million Ontarians have been forced to postpone surgeries, including cancer surgeries, heart bypass surgeries, and knee and hip replacements. Many of these folks will not many of these folks will have to wait almost three years before receiving care. And yet this government has failed to adequately fund our health care. Their 2021 budget promised less than half of the funding identified as necessary by Ontario's Financial Accountability Officer and the Ontario Medical Association. Brampton has been struggling with a surgery backlog as well. Brampton Civic Hospital continues to be overcrowded and suffers from chronic hallway medicine. The people of Brampton and our health care continue to be neglected by this government. We have just one hospital for over 600,000 people, and this government's expansion plan to turn Peel Memorial into a hospital doesn't include an ER, and it doesn't even come close to the 850 new beds that Brampton urgently needs. Our urgent care centre, Peel Memorial, has been closed for most of the pandemic due to capacity and staffing. The staffing crisis in our health care system could be addressed if this government were to scrap Bill 124. This would return thousands of health care workers to the sector. Speaker, I'm calling on this government to repeal Bill 124 and immediately provide the funding necessary to address the 850 beds needed in Brampton build a new emergency room and beds at Peel Memorial, and build a third hospital to appropriately address Brampton's health care needs. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our member statements for this morning. I'm very pleased to inform the House that Paige Tanisha Hossein from the riding of Scarborough Southwest is one of today's Page captains. And we have with us today at Queen's Park her mother, Nashin Ruman Hossein, and father, Abdullah Hossein. We're also joined by the family of Page Captain Owen Shen from the riding of Willowdale, his mother, Li Lei, and friend, Ying Du, as well the parents of Page Captain Lucia Wei from the riding of Richmond Hill, her mother, Jing Yu, and her father, Shonig Wei. Welcome to the Legislative Assembly of Ontario. We're delighted to have you here.